Okay, now we're going to look at solving part B and what we're doing here is we've got our buffer which we've already found the pH of, it's 4.77 and now we're going to add 5.00 mils of 0 0.200 molar NaOH, that's a strong base and it's going to increase the volume of the solution now to 205.0 so we've got our initial buffer solution which was 200.0 mils and we are adding to that 5.00 mils of strong base. Now that's going to give us a total solution of 205.0 mils. Now because the volume of the solution is changing it means that the concentrations of these are changing as well while we do the calculations. So what we're going to have to do is do all our conversions and calculations in terms of moles rather than molarity makes this um, constant calculation a little bit longer but at least it'll end up giving us the right answer so let's look at how we handle that so our first mission is to find out what the volume, the initial volumes of our acetic acid and our acetate ion were and we can do that well from the problem because we were told they were 100.0 mils each initially. And our idea here is to find the number of moles of each before they got mixed. Understand though that even after they get mixed in to form the buffer, the number of moles of these two won't change. The concentrations will change, but the number of moles of each won't change. Alright, so we've got 100.0 mils of each we need to find the number of moles of each of these, the number of moles of acetic acid in the initial buffer solution we're going to do that by multiplying the concentration which was 0 0.100 mole per litre by the volume of the solution before it got put in the buffer and that was 100.0 mils which converts to 0 0.1000 litres we've got to keep the significant figures right here as well 100.0 mils is four significant figures and this is four significant figures as well now when we want a moles what, when we want moles what we do is we take concentration moles per liter and multiply it by liters that's why it was necessary to convert this into liters in this step so I take the concentration I multiply it by the number of liters that gives me moles keep in mind the number of significant figures we've got here we've got three here and four here the answer will contain three and indeed it does so before we got the solution together we had 0.10 we have 0 0.0100 moles of acetic acid in the solution we do the same thing with the moles of acetate we've got 0 0.105 moles per liter and we've still got 100 mils of that, convert that to liters, we end up with 0 0.0105 moles of acetic acid. Now the moles of sodium hydroxide we're going to add to the solution, we figure that up the same way. We've got 5 mils, which is 0 0.00500 liters. So we take the concentration, multiply it by the volume, and we will end up with the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that gets added to the solution. All right, let's summarize what we've got so far. And what we have so far in our initial buffer solution Now I'm going to assume we've added everything in now. I told you that the number of moles of things won't change in the buffer, the concentrations do but the moles don't. We have this many moles of, uh, of AH I'm going to call CH3, COOH, AH we have 0 0.0105 moles of A- minus, and we're just about to add 0 0.0 We're just about to add 0 0.00100 moles of OH- minus to our solution. So now we've got to figure out what that's going to do when we put this into the solution. So 
So when this reacts, here's what's going to happen. The AH will react with the OH- that gets added. So if you, you're adding strong base, what's going to react with it is the acid that's in the solution. And that makes sense. Acids react with bases. So when this reacts, it's going to form A- minus plus H2O. And we don't really care about the H2O. But now what we've got to do is we've got to figure out what happened to the concentration or the number of moles of AH and the number of moles of A- minus after we added the moles of OH-. minus. So here's what's going to happen the new moles of AH will be the initial moles of AH minus the moles of OH- minus that were added. So in this instance, it's uh, 0 0.0100 minus 0 0.00100, which comes up to be 0 0.0090 moles of, a, of AH. So what happened? Well, we have 0 0.0100 moles of AH in the solution. It actually reacts with this much OH minus. And when it reacts with that, the amount of AH now decreases by the amount of OH- minus that we add. Right, so I want you to, to see why that happens. All right, so here it is. We're looking at this example over here. We've got our buffer solution, equal amounts of AH, equal amounts of A-. minus. We add in one OH-, minus. look what happens the amount of AH decreases by 1 and the amount of A- minus increases by 1. If I had added two OH- minuses, then what would have happened is that the AH would have decreased by 2 and the A- minus would have increased by 2. The reason for that is because of this reaction right here. AH reacts with OH-. minus. If I have five AHs and two OH- minuses, reacting with 5 AHs, two of those AHs will be converted into two A minuses. I'll write that down over here. All right, so I've got a bunch of AHs. we'll say five of them initially, and that's initially. And to that, I'll add two OH minuses. So what's going to happen is these OH minuses are going to react with these AHs, and they're going to turn into A minuses. So the effect is that the AH will go down by two and the A- minus will go up by 2. And that's the effect of adding sodium hydroxide into the solution. Now, since there's already A- minus in here, I'll put another 5 in here as well, then these 2 will join to the 5 that are already there. So the net effect is that the AH will go down by the amount of OH- minus that we add, and the A- minus will go up by the amount of OH- minus that we added to the solution. Alright, so that's how we figure out the new moles of AH. Now keeping in mind, I'll just put this reaction back up here, AH plus OH minus gives A minus plus H2O. And as I already said, the 
moles of the new moles of CH3COO minus will equal the initial moles plus the moles of OH minus that were added. That's because the CH3COO minus is going to go up by the number of moles of OH minus that were added and that's going to give us 0 0.0115 moles. Let me say a quick word about significant figures here. We've got four decimal places and five decimal places here, so the answer comes out to four decimal places for the acetic acid. And for the, um, for the moles of acetate, it's the same, 0 0.0105, that's four, and that's five, so this comes out to four decimal places. All right, the next step is to convert these to concentrations. Now the number of moles we've already figured out up here, but to get concentrations we have to divide that by the total volume of solution, which is 205.0 milliliters. The reason I know that is because it's uh, the it's 100 mils, 100.0 mils, plus 100.0 mils. That's for each of the buffer solutions, plus 5.00 mils. And that's the amount of sodium hydroxide that we added. That that we added. So that's 205.0 mils. The total solution, total solution volume. Now, now to get the concentrations of CH3COOH and CH3COO minus, we simply take those moles that we calculated here, and we divide them each by this volume in liters, which is 0 0.2050 liters. Now what that comes down to is 0 0.044 molar. Now that's going to be two significant figures because now we're dealing with division. This is two significant figures divided by four significant figures, so we get two significant figures here. This is three sig figs divided by four sig figs to give us three sig figs here. You'll notice that these concentrations are about half what we started with, which pretty much gels with what we've been thinking because the initial ones we started with were in 100 mil solutions. Now we're looking at a bit more than double the solutions, so now the concentrations are about half. So we know we're in the ballpark with these kinds of concentrations that I've got here. Right, in the next step, what we do is we use a procedure similar to the one that we used for part A of this problem where we found the pH of the initial buffer solution. I would ask you to go back to that mini lecture to go over that because I won't, I won't be going into quite as much detail here as I did there. But going through the, uh, going through what we do, we've got the concentration of the acid, we've got the concentration of the ion and that's uh, plus delta right there as well. Didn't quite come through there. But the since the acetic acid is a weak acid then we can make the following assumptions and that is that 0 0.044 minus delta is 0 0.044 and 0 0.0561 plus delta is 0 0.0561 and again we get delta here for our H plus. Right, just justifying the minus delta and the plus delta, we know that initially we've got 0 0.044 and 0 0.0561 and we're assuming no acid in the solution as yet. After these react and equilibrate, the acid has to go up because it's at zero, there's only one place it can go and that's up and it's going to go up by an amount that I'm calling delta. The acetic acid is going to go down by that exact same amount because that's where the H plus is coming from. It's coming from the acetic acid. So when the acetic acid breaks up, it's going to break up into one H plus and one of these. If we pretend there were three breaking up, there three of these would be lost and three of these would form and three of these would form. So we would lose three gain 3 and gain 3. That's why it's minus delta plus delta and delta. So we make this assumption again because it's a weak acid and we can make that assumption because it's a buffer and buffers are defined to be made from weak acids. 
we can go ahead then sub and substitute in our values the 0 0.044 and the 0 0.0561 for the uh, for the acetic acid and the acetate ion and then we can solve for delta delta is the concentration of H plus it comes out to 1.4 times 10 to the negative 5 our pH then is going to be 4.9 we obtain that by taking the negative log of this value down here